What's up guys, PK here with more financing tips. This time, we're gonna talk about some of the do's and don'ts on what to do with brand new accounts with uh, your business line of credit or business credit card or even personal uh, credit cards and lines of credit for that matter. So let's get into it. I'm gonna be going back and forth between my screen and the video here. I know I'm a visual learner, some of you are as well. So let's get started. All right. Best practices. I'm gonna start with the don'ts. This is what you don't wanna do. Here we go. Number one, don't go over your credit limit. Anytime you have a credit limit established, when you exceed it, you're breaking the contract and you're breaking the lender's trust. And the banks actually keep track of that. So it's really bad on the business side if it happens. Uh, they're gonna have an internal history. Uh, it's not gonna affect your credit as much. On the personal side, if you go over your credit limit, your FICO score is gonna get beat up, I guarantee you. Uh, if you don't believe me, try it yourself and see what happens. Go over your credit limit and then pull your credit and compare before and after, and you'll see uh, there's a huge difference, sometimes 30, 40, 50 points. As soon as you pay it back down, your score will go back to normal. However, even though your score goes back to normal, that lender has a record of you exceeding your credit limit, which is actually a strike against you. So we recommend just not going over your credit limit. Uh, go about 90% at most. So if you have a $5,000 credit limit, don't go above maybe $4,500. Next one, do not take a cash advance. Desperate people take cash advances. Anytime you're in a dire situation or you need money or uh, something happens, your sales slow down, uh, you take a cash advance and that's a trigger of a financial distress. Lenders don't like to lend to a uh, business that's financially distressed. Now, it's okay if your business is seasonal and you know you're gonna make it up. If you run into a situation where you absolutely need a cash advance uh, or you're gonna default on some of your debt, that's fine, but do it very, very sparingly, okay? Not to mention, you don't wanna pay 25 to 35% interest rate on a cash advance. I mean, that's ludicrous. So uh, don't take a cash advance. Number three, do not use money transfer services. I see this time and time again, guys. A lot of business owners will use either Western Union or um, they'll use, uh, what's the other one, MoneyGram, and they'll transfer money from their business line of credit or their uh, business credit card uh, through this money service so they could get the money in their bank account because cash advances only allow you to go up to, uh, a lot of times, 25, 30% of your overall limit. Now, this is a huge red flag. This is probably the number one no-no of what not to do. Do not use money transfer services. A lot of lenders will actually shut your account down if they find out that you're doing it. Obviously, they're gonna find out because it's gonna hit your uh, statement. And a lot of times, there's certain lenders out there that we know of, as soon as that transaction comes through, they'll freeze, the, uh, they'll freeze that account and they will open up an investigation to make sure it wasn't a fraudulent transaction. So stay away from money transfer services. Number four, do not make high-risk purchases. What are high-risk purchases? Well, casinos, liquor stores, pawn shops, and adult entertainment. A lot of those are not legitimate business purchases, okay? Uh, I mean, if you do it on the personal side, you might be able to get away with it, but on the business side, especially when the account is brand new, 60 days, maybe even 90 days, refrain from making purchases like this. I mean, we've had all sorts of stories about clients uh, going out going to a casino or whatever you know having some fun and uh, their account actually gets frozen and then uh, eventually some of them get shut down if you have strong enough credit and you can back up that these are legitimate expenses and there's no fraud involved then they might keep it open but it's still a strike against you so just don't do it guys especially when the account is new all right now I'm gonna move on to the do's. What are some good practices? What's gonna keep the bank happy and keep extending credit limit increases to you in the future? All right, number one, 
activate your card as soon as possible. As soon as that card comes in, you want to activate it. Why? Because you don't want the bank to wonder if it got lost in the mail, if somebody else got a hold of it. You want to activate it to show that you received the card. That's their way of knowing that you actually have it in your possession. Number two, pre-authorize major purchases, okay? Especially when the account is about uh, one, two, three months old. Anytime you make a major purchase, by a major purchase, I mean over a thousand dollars. Anytime you want to charge more than a thousand bucks, call the number on the back of the card and let them know that you're going to make a purchase. They're going to want to know who that vendor is that's going to charge uh, and what amount are they going to charge you. So that shows responsible use. So always pre-authorize major purchases. Uh, perhaps when the card is seasoned, uh, six months and over, if that's typical activity and you always make major purchases, you don't have to pre-authorize them anymore. But uh, like I said, in the first uh, month or two, always pre-authorize. Number three, keep an eye on your credit limit. Again, this goes hand in hand with the don't that we mentioned before. Uh, the don't is don't go over your credit limit. The do is stay under your credit limit. Maximum 90, maybe 95% at most. Uh, that's where you want to be. Uh, ideally, you want to be under 80%, but it's not a perfect world. We understand clients need money. You need to pay business expenses. So 95% is your line. All right. Number four, set up auto pay. Uh, if you set up auto pay, it'll ensure a few things. Number one, it's going to ensure that you never miss a payment. If you never miss a payment, then the lender is always going to be happy with you. Number two, it shows the lender that you are a responsible individual financially. So uh, always want to set up auto pay. As a matter of fact, I recommend auto pay on all of your accounts, every single one, your loans, anytime you borrow money, the lender has the option to set up auto pay, set it up at least for the minimum payment on uh, your credit cards and lines of credit, and you'll at least get that on time check mark that you made a payment. If you want to pay extra above and beyond the auto pay, I think that's great, but at least set it up. Number five, your payment amount. So. Are you making just the minimum payment or are you paying more than a minimum payment? For our clients, when they consult with us and they go through our program, we recommend that you make at least double or triple the minimum payment, even if you have an introductory 0% rate. If you have a 0% and you're making more than the minimum payment, it's gonna show that you have cash flow to be able to support that debt. So in the future, you're gonna be able to get uh, additional credit. Also, another note while we're on the 0% topic is while you have the 0% and you want to write it, go ahead and write it, but right before it expires, we recommend paying it all the way down. Uh, pay the whole thing, zero it out, so that way, number one, you don't get hit with the high interest that comes with it, and number two, uh, it shows the lender that you actually have the money. See, banks want to lend you money when they know that you uh, don't need the money. They don't want to lend it to you when you're desperate or you're in a bind and you need the money. Uh, that's not what banks do. They want to return on their investment. Uh, they want to recoup their original principal amount. They don't want to incur a loss. So just keep that in mind. All right. Number six, online banking. Always sign up for online banking uh, whenever there's an option. And nowadays, I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find a lender that doesn't have online banking. So as soon as you receive your card, you activate it, set up online banking. It'll show the bank that uh, you care and that you're going to uh, keep track of your account. All right, guys. So that's your weekly business finance tip. I'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this one, subscribe to our channel. If you're watching it on Facebook, share it with a friend like our Facebook page, and I will see you next week for another awesome tip.